This is my Alocasia Reginula Black Velvet. I have had for approximately four years now. It has grown a number of different offshoots. You can see there are three separate rhizomes here and three different stems on the top of the soil, supporting many different petioles with many different beautiful velvety leaves. But one thing I'd like you to notice about this particular plant is that as it got older and the plant grew upwards, the stem also grew up out of the soil now, in the wild, in the rainforest, leaf litter would pile up higher and higher, covering this area, allowing roots to grow out of the stem. However, in your house, this is not happening. So right here, this stem is beginning to tip over because it is so top heavy. So I definitely need to repot this plant so that this stem does not snap in half. Another option would be for me to fill this pot up higher with substrate. However, I think it's time to repot this plant. It has been a year or so, and alocasias really enjoy to be potted up a size after a year. It tends to really reinvigorate growth and create a more robust plant. want to pick a pot that is too small and you don't want to pick a pot that's too large because then your roots will drown in too much substrate because the substrate aka the soil mix that you use will hold too much water for too long and then the roots will rot. So I'm going to use this pot here to repot my plant. It's a little larger than I would like for this alocasia. However, I'm going to pot this plant down a little deeper into this pot. So it doesn't matter that this pot is so large. The key is when repotting a plant is that you want no more than one inch between the root ball and the sides of the pot. That is a good gauge for how you want the pot to be sized. And you always want to leave at least one inch between the top of the soil and the top of the pot. This is so that when you water the plant and the soil rises a little bit, it won't overflow and you'll have molten lava. A trick with potting alocasias is to pot them low in a pot so that as the stem rises, you can just continuously pour new soil mix to mimic that rising leaf litter. You'll notice very important is that this pot has a drainage hole. It didn't have a drainage hole to begin with. This is a pot that I get from Ikea. Um, what I use was a diamond drill bit. You can get them from any hardware store or amazon.com and I drilled a hole in the bottom myself. Why are drainage holes so important? Because every once in a while, you are going to want to water your plant so thoroughly that water is going to flush out of the bottom and wash away all of the extra accumulated salts from the substrate. Now, of course, if I just put soil mix into this pot, it would all go through this hole. Hello, hello. But, what I'm going to do is cover this hole, many of you do this already, with a mesh liner. I am pretty hardcore and I like to cut up old window screens. I'll just cut up an old screen and put it on top of the hole. However, you can be all bougie about it and go on Amazon and order these flower pot hole mesh pads. show you what potting mix I use for my alocasias and for a lot of my rare tropical plants. So the base of my aeroid mix is Fox Farm Ocean Soil and the reason why I love this 
potting mix in particular is that yes it is a peat moss based mix but it also includes products from the ocean as an additive to add calcium and other nutrients to your mix that just adding peat moss alone might not add because um, it contains fish emulsion crab meal and shrimp meal but it also contains earthworm castings um, bat guano and kelp meal and oyster shell. So there's a lot of good stuff in here. I'm going to add this to the bucket to mix it up. So I'm going to make this mix about, let's say 50% of Fox Farm Ocean mix. It already has some perlite in it, so there is some aeration already. And next I'm going to add additional perlite Perlite is volcanic glass. It's natural, it absorbs a lot of water and fertilizer and creates big air pockets so that your, your aeroid mix will not be as dense. I will add approximately 25% of perlite. Any brand of organic perlite made for plants will do. Um, this Mother Earth brand, I believe it's Mother Earth, uh, is awesome because it's large and coarse, which you don't get in many places. Sometimes perlite can be super tiny. Okay, and last but certainly not least, my favorite stuff on earth, <coughs> pine bark. Sorry, that dust is intense. This is Orchiata pine bark. So this is considered orchid bark, but extremely high quality orchid bark. And so it might be a little more expensive than other brands you see out there, but it is the best of the best for your plants. I would add another 25% to make your mix complete. Pour this in, Woo! mix it with my hands. It's a party up in here. And I like to eyeball it too. If it doesn't look chunky enough, I'll add a little more perlite or charcoal or bark. Now that it's all mixed up, I'm gonna pour it back into my bucket. What I wanna do is add a little bit of the mix to the bottom. I'd say around three, maybe four inches max but two to three inches of potting mix to the bottom of the pot is the sweet spot. So again, two to three inches on the bottom of potting mix. Beautiful. Three inches will allow the plant's roots to grow downward and not provide too much soil below so that your plant drowns in soggy soil. Set that aside. Now, we have to remove the plant from its old pot. First thing I do is I stick my finger in the hole, don't get any gross ideas, and I push the plant out as easy as that. If the plant is too stuck, you can take a hammer and crack the pot or just kind of hit it like a ketchup bottle and your plant should come out just fine. All right, it's like delivering a baby. Okay. Now, this is the time where you want to go corm hunting. Corms are the tiny bulb-like structures that form underneath the soil that you can then strip up their outer laying and layer and plant in parlite water or moss and they will sprout new plants. So there's one right there. One, two, two, I just found one in there. No corm left behind. Sometimes the corms look like sperm. I will definitely make a follow-up video with what to do with the corms, but for now we will put them aside. going to use this pot which is actually the same size as my other pot but a little nicer and newer and cleaner but I'm going to plant this plant deeper down so that I can 
still reach my goal of covering the exposed stems. Okay, so same thing with this pot. Put a mesh liner on the bottom. Fill the bottom up, since it's a smaller pot, with only, let's say, two inches of substrate. Put the plant inside. Oh, it's looking gorgeous already. And already it's so nice and deep inside this pot. And now I'm gonna take this small little bucket here and dump the rest of our mix, our nutrient rich mix in there. Well, look, these stems are covered and what's going to happen is fresh new roots are going to grow higher up on those alocasia stems underneath the soil now. Take a look at this beautiful thing. It's planted deeply. It's well supported. That is a healthy, beautiful plant. And now my baby is back in its happy space, except I see one leaf that's on its way out. So this is normal for alocasia leaves to yellow. If you have a bottom leaf that is yellowing like this, especially along the edges, that is okay. Just take a scissor and chop it off at the base. Ta-da! Now that I'm done repotting it, I'm going to give it a thorough watering. I hope you found this video useful, and if you liked it, please hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button. <laughs> I hope you liked this video, and if you did, yeah, hit the subscribe button. Where is the subscribe button? Right there? Yes. No, that's not where it is. Yeah.